Janna Smite top. Is it worth taking? I mean, look, I'm just saying this is a Coach Blakers podcast. I've been coaching for almost going on nine years. I mean, I've been in the game and I've been playing the game and I've been coaching the game. But okay, anyway, is it worth taking? Is it smart? Is it something to do? Is it really overpowered? We'll get into it. But first, we will be streaming every single day and we will be having more Coach Blaker podcasts every single day. So every single day at 12 p.m. sharp, you'll be having a stream on Twitch at 12 p.m. sharp, okay, every single day. And then we'll be having a podcast every single day as well about relevant topics um, that is happening currently with League of Legends. So if that interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button, that way you're notified for the next video. And make sure you follow my Twitter and my Discord, that way you know, like, oh, he's not streaming today, you know what's going on. Well, I'll let you know on my Twitter and my Discord. Also, I added a new service to my site, coachblicket.com. Yeah, I'm a coach, I didn't know if you know. Coachblicket.com is where you wanna go and there's a new service there, and it is called Duo Q with Coach Blicker. Now, it's not boosted. I thought about this. I thought about this, but I thought, and I thought some more, and I thought some more, and what I came across was that this might be actually helpful, because I've done it for a couple of students that I've already um, coached, that I already like, have my sessions going. So, pretty much what happens is we go ahead and duo, and I mean, it doesn't matter what role you play. I play all the roles. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into the game and we're going to do it. Now, this is only for NA because I don't have any, like, I don't have all the ranks on other servers, just NA. So whatever rank you are, I can play with you on NA, but other servers, it's not going to happen. We go in, we talk about matchups, we talk about macro, macro choices, um, we talk about decision making, and, and we kind of just walk through the game, basically like I'm holding your hand through the game. That way you can get a better understanding on how you would play the game yourself and you would understand how to play like a high-low player. I don't know if I'll keep this. It's in beta mode right now. Give it a try before it's gone, or maybe it will stay. If I get really good feedback about it, I'll continue to do it, okay? So coachblicket.com is where you want to go for that. I also have two other services. Um, I mean, three other services, obviously, VOD reviews, um, VOD review with coach, and then an actual coaching session. So um, test that out. See if you like it. But without further ado, let's get started here. I always start the day off with a quote. So let's go ahead with that quote. Consistency at oh, consistency action consistent action creates consistent results let me read that for you one more time consistent action creates consistent results christian kane is the person who wrote that quote thank you christian kane if you're watching you're probably not but thank you for that quote because i just read it and it's, it's yours okay so what does that mean that means it's better to just be consistent it's better to do what's been working because that will give you better results later down the line i was watching this video and the guy was explaining something. He was like, so there's three there's three types of students. You have the students that, you know, don't really do the much homework at all, really. And they uh, study at the last second, and then obviously they fail the test. You got the other type of student, which is student number two, where they study at the end, just like the other person, but they do about maybe like half the homework. You know, they, they get about, uh, they, they pass. They get about a D or a C, you know what I'm saying? And then... You have the final student, student number three, who actually does all their homework. You know, they may not have studied that well, but they did all their homework and they get a B or better. And it's not because they're smarter. It's not because they're, you know, they're crazy. It's because they're being consistent, right? Consistently doing something means that you'll have better results. Even if you don't even try to have better results, it will happen because you're being consistent. And that goes with anything in life, including League of Legends, right? Being consistent is where, where it's at. Now, why would I pick this quote? I'm talking talking about Janatop. Why, why, why would I pick this quote talking about Janatop? That don't make no sense. Think about it. What is Janatop right now? Is that a consistent thing that always has been working? Or is that something that's probably flavor of the month and whether it be nerfed or not, it's probably going to be gone within the next week or two. Now, why is Janatop actually good? Let's get to that nitty gritty. Janatop is actually good because of a couple factors. First of all, it's not good into every matchup. The thing is, Janna's top is really good into matchups that can't really push her out early. If you're having a champ top, and a lot of them are pretty bad at wave clear, um, if they're, you know, they're tanky or they're bruisery, um, mainly high elo players. I don't see any low elo players playing any tanks or any bruisers. Uh, most is Nasus and Malphite. But the thing is that these champions can't clear the wave fast enough for, before Janna roams and comes back. The movement speed is a lot. And having that early scrimmage potential where your team um, can have an added Janna, like let's say somebody's just going into the jungle, they can have a Janna with them going. And you know, it's a lot harder to contest an objective. There's two smites, there's two of you guys and things like that. 
and obviously she doesn't need that much farm. You can go and probably tax it a little bit if you want to. And you know, you're still getting, it's kind of like a funneling strat, so to speak. You know, a lot of resources are getting put into you um, through your top laner. And then of course, Janna can just go around like ganking other lanes too. She received a buff to her movement speed and also she just received a buff to her overall kit in general, but the movement speed is the thing that's really kind of hitting it home for people. Now, let's kind of dissect this real quick and let's see if it's a Janna top thing or if it's anyone can do a type thing. First things first, not being punished for roaming because you're shoving them in uh, pretty decently and they can't wave clear back. Are there champions that are top lane that can do that? Yes, Irelia, Riven, Trundle, um, I can't think of any more, but the list goes on and on. There's a lot of champs top lane that can wave clear pretty efficiently. Maybe not on their first back, but on their second back, they should have enough wave clear to clear pretty efficiently. Um, if, if they see Jenna roaming, I mean, it's a support and a jungler versus a actual top laner and a jungler. So although it will be weird and, you know, it might be a pain to deal with, you should be able to win that, especially if you're dealing with a farming jungler on the Janna side. So do I need to play Janna to push the wave and then go roam to help my jungler? No, you don't, right? All right, second thing here, what is what, what else is it? It's the smite. Okay, I'm able to have smite and I'm able to roam around with smite and with my jungler and we can do things together and we can, we can smite it up together. Can I do that with any top layer? Yes, would I do that with any top layer? Probably not, that'd be troll because you need your summoner spells. You need your ignite to help kill you in lane. You need teleport to help pressure lanes uh, mid to late game or even just early to get back to lane. Um, you, you can use exhaust. Like there's other spells better than smite. So Janna got you beat there with taking the smite and, and uh, you know, being useful there. Um, and even if that person does take their tower, let's say it is a, a Malphite or, or, or I don't know, what's another like tanky champion? Um, if it's something that's just not that great with gold, it doesn't really matter. They're the same champ with a thousand gold versus no gold. They're, they're, they're the same champion. Like if it, if it is against that and they do take the tower, it is what it is. But you know what type of meta we're in right now that a lot of people aren't really noticing? We're in a split push meta. We're in a meta where that almost every game, there's one split pusher. Now, I don't know if it's the meta for like Grandmaster and Challenger, because usually that split pushing doesn't work when you're that high, but it's better for Diamond and below. So when we think about this, you're always gonna have a Scion. You're always gonna have a Yori. You're always gonna have a Camille. You're always gonna have an Aurelia. You're always gonna have, you're always going to have that split pusher. Can Jenna deal with the split pusher? If a Jenna's roaming and that person can clear waves and that person can take plates, no, heck no. That champ's gonna be really, really high. But Janet is very annoying. And that's the thing that really hits home with solo queue. Because if anything success is successful in solo queue, it's because they are annoying or overpowered. Janna's not overpowered, I think she's just really annoying. And players don't know how to deal with that without mental booming. If you really understood that that's just a support champion on top, just like Soraka was, um, speaking of which, there's a Soraka mid thing going around, so I'm gonna make a video about that too. If you, if you notice kind of that's what's going on, you can easily kind of deal with it and rectify it. Get a uh, Serpent's Fang. If you notice a Janna's top being picked, you can pick a champ that really that goes well with Serpent's Fang, you know? Um, you can pick an AP, AP top laner that goes well with uh, Shadow Flame. You can pick Victor top. That was a champ that will shove a wave, take plates, and stomp mid to late game. Like, stomp that lane, right? And so, you have these champions that will scale, obviously, harder than Janna, although it will be annoying. It is a support champion. Mid to late game, you're gonna have only, what, two to three damage dealers because you have a Janna top when the other team may have four damage dealers and a support. So you're kind of just out, 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 outpacing yourself there. Um, the, other, the final thing that I kind of want to touch on here, maybe not final, but the other thing that I want to touch on here is the fact that people probably can't play Janna top properly anyway. I've played in Smurf queue. I played in regular like ELOs. People do it and have no clue what they're doing. And Someone told me, uh, Trinity, if you're there, it was you. Um, Trinity told me that they picked it up from a lower ELO player. Now, if this person's lower ELO, clearly they don't know what they're doing. I mean, that's just kind of point blank period. If they, if they could climb, they would climb. So the fact that we're picking up something from lower ELOs and putting it into um, 
a higher low play. It, 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 it's pretty interesting. Now, I don't have anything wrong with that because that's usually how it works. There's a lot of builds and stuff that comes from lower ELO players and they just don't do it right. And the higher ELO players kind of refine it a little bit better and make it work. That That's a, fa that's a fact that happens because lower ELO players can experiment more often than higher ELO players because higher ELO players are playing against players that are actually really good. So the, the more, the lack of experience um, is, is like, you know, holding them back still. And when a high-level player refines it, it's a different story. Okay, so if we look at the Agena win rate for top lane here, we're gonna look at NA, because most of you guys watching are probably from NA. Um, and we're gonna look at not just a higher ELO, we're gonna look at all ranks, period. Jenna top's win rate is a 50%. So that goes to show you that all ranks are, you, I'm at UDRGG, you can go to that if you would like to. Um, I could share my screen, but I mean, y'all well, y'all don't believe me. Um, I went to NA and I went to all ranks. It is a 50% win rate top. Now, if we go to something which is like higher ELO, let's just go to, I don't know, Platinum. Platinum Plus. It has a 54% win rate. I don't know about you, but Platinum Plus players usually get boomed pretty quick. Let's go to Diamond Plus. Diamond Plus is 56% win rate. Now, what we want to notice is that this is out of a small sample size. This is only 700 games. Um, Platinum Plus is 2,000 games. So it's not really as much as, let's just pick a regular top laner here. A regular S tier top laner, uh, Platinum Plus and NA, will say that it is, what's a, what's a regular one? Okay, Trinomir. Trinomir, what? Okay, pick man. I mean, I'll go to pick rate. All right, Fiora. I was like, Trinomir is not really like picked that often. Um, Plat Plus, Fiora, she has 56,000 games. And her win rate's 50, but she's S tier. So you kind of see what I'm what I'm getting at here. A small sample size inflates the win rate, win, win rate as well. And you're probably dueling with someone when you play this Jenna top thing, which also inflates the win rate. There's a lot of factors going into why these champs get higher win rates. Um, and it is what it is, right? Now let's just take this to Korea, because I like to go to Korea. Oh, I'm sorry, that was uh that was um Okay, uh, I'm trolling. Let me go to Korea. Okay, there we go. So we're in Korea, and Fior is played 15,000 times. Okay, 15,000 matches. Now let's go to Jenna in Korea, and we will see if the same thing is kind of there. Jenna in Korea is played top lane 5,000 matches, platinum plus. Once again, the sample size is smaller, yet we all know Fiora is broken. So again, that's kind of something that inflates the win rate. And it's probably why Riot hasn't done anything about it yet or maybe said anything about it. Um, I haven't heard anything. Maybe you guys have. But it looks like just a trend. A trend that will go away eventually. And I don't think it's broken. It's just players don't know how to play against it. And it's super, super annoying. And that's why it's working. Once again, solo queue is full of people who get upset about everything. And it's very easy to mental boom. And it's very easy to accomplish your goal by doing something crazy. How many times have you seen a weird off meta support pick and they stomp bot lane? How many times have you seen a weird off meta mid laner and they stomp mid lane? Is it broken? No, it's just because the people don't know how to deal with it. Because it's not normal. It's abnormal. So it works. Eventually, players are going to get used to the fact that, oh, maybe if I just don't fight when Janna's roaming, it will be a lot easier to do XYZ. Maybe if I play bot side, it'll be a lot easier to do XYZ, you know? Um, if Janna's gonna let me just farm top, I'll just play mid to late game and our team just doesn't do anything because Janna's roaming. Like, eventually people will start learning. Our, our, you know, doesn't matter what server it is, League of Legends players are smart, they just don't like, it's just, it's just hard to deal with things that just are abnormal, that's all. But once you get used to it, you'll realize it's easy to really deal with. Um, Talon Jungle is an example. Talon Jungle, when it first got introduced, it was like terrorizing the rift. But eventually people started getting used to it. People started knowing how to deal with it. Same thing with like Shaco players. Same thing with Kane players going through walls. Same thing with uh, Twitch players popping up all the time. Like eventually you just start learning how to deal with it and it doesn't impact you as much as it used to. Okay. So do I think you should, you know, take advantage of this Jenna top thing? I don't think so. Maybe if you have a duo and you trust them to be able to kind of carry you, go ahead. But I wouldn't do that in lower elo because... I wouldn't do that, period, if it's solo queue. But if you are duoing, I wouldn't do it in low elo because I feel like people just don't understand how to play the Janna top thing properly and we'll probably just lose the game for the team anyway. 
Um, and if it is in higher elo and you're not dueling, I mean, you guys should just know you guys should know better. You guys should not be getting clapped by no Janna top. Um, I have yet to win one with Janna, and I've yet to lose one to, against the Janna. So uh, I, 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 I don't know. It, it is obviously working, but I think it's due to duos. I don't think it's due to a solo queue player picking Janna top unless they are smurfing. Um, or they're maybe auto filled Janna and they're just walking around. But it's more of a, it's more or less people just not understanding how to play against it, not it really being that OP, um, in my opinion. Okay? This is just my professional opinion. That's, 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 this is me. I feel like the pick is weird, and that's why it's working. If it stays long enough, people will get used to it, and it won't work anymore. It's just annoying. And people hate annoying things, and people usually surrender when it's annoying. Usually people rage when it's annoying. Usually people tilt off the face of the earth when it's annoying, and they don't think about the long run, which is like, dang, I'm playing Irelia. Dang, I'm playing, you know, Darius. I will just stomp later. Dang, I'm playing a champ top and my my top laner can't rotate. I should probably just leave the crab and leave my camps and probably go to the other side because that's the side that the jungler is not playing to because Janna's always top side of my jungle. Maybe I should just go to the bot side of the jungle. I, I, I think that would work. No, I'm gonna just go top and just get killed over and over because I don't got no help from my top laner and their top laner doesn't need farm. Like, it's dumb. Play smart, play it, you, you got it. If you guys don't know how to play smart, coachbucket.com is where you wanna go. <laughs> Um, if you guys would like some coaching, coachwicked.com is where you want to go. Um, I hope, I hope this video was informative. If it's not informative, well then I, I tried, but you know, I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. Hope, hope you guys learned something today. Hope you guys learned why Jana top is kind of disgusting right now. Um, and you know, if you guys are planning to play it cause you guys like Jana and you guys are like, Hey, my champ is finally cool in another spot. I want to have fun and I want to, you know, I really want to try to climb in another spot while it's good right now, but I, and I love Jana, then play it. If you're like, man, I'm a thousand game Darius top, but I want to try this Janna thing and I'm going to spam it to get my rank up, don't do that. Two things are going to happen. You're going to destroy your rank because it's not going to work and you have no clue what you're doing, or you're going to climb, maybe a little bit, um, maybe a lot, but when it's gone or when it doesn't work, people actually understand what they're doing. You're going to get stomped, you're going to demote. Remember what we said. Well, what did we say at the start of this, uh, uh, the start of this podcast? Consistent action creates consistent results. There's always going to be something new. There's always going to be some flavor of the month pick. There's always going to be something crazy to try. Try it in normals. If you really want to improve and you really want to climb, you need to stick to what's working and you need to stick to what's, what you're working on to improve. And I promise you, you will climb. You don't need any gimmicks. You don't need anything crazy. You just need discipline and you just need consistency, okay? So thank you guys for watching this Coach Wicked podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Guys, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. As I said, we will be having one every single day, and we will be having a stream every single day at 12 p.m. Central. So make sure you're a part of that. Peace late. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. I do appreciate it. And thank you guys for doing what? Approaching this like a coach. Have a good rest of your day, your night, whenever you're watching this. And make sure you book a, book a session at coachbucket.com. Use the code FIRST to get uh, $5 off your first purchase of anything on my site.